Hi, and welcome everyone. Lisa here for Honey Bee Stamps. Thanks for joining me. So today I have a fun interactive Halloween card in the form of a haunted barn. Now I did all the die cutting off screen to save a little bit of time. But to get started, what I did was I cut two panels from the barn scene die set. And I did one with the Nina Desert Storm and then one out of black cardstock. And then a third die cut piece here from the Home Essential 6x6 paper pad. I've also went ahead and used a piece of that 6x6 paper to cut the eave for the barn. And then I ran that through the my decorative panel through my die cut machine to cut the doors out. Now one door I did partial die cutting so that it would stay hinged to the barn and the other one I wanted it to look like it was a falling off because it's a haunted barn so I decided to play around with it and have some fun. A couple of these pieces I won't end up using but that's okay we'll save those for later. Now I did go ahead and die cut two ghosts and two pumpkins from the die set The Names Jack. We'll be using those as well. So here's my interactive part. This is an easy sound module. Super simple to record your voice or music on, whatever it is you're using. It's easy. It comes with step-by-step -step instructions for you to follow to um, record on this. It has double-sided adhesive on the back of it. So I'm going to peel that off and go ahead and put it on my bottom panel, which is going to be the Nina Desert Storm panel. Now, once we have this placed, I need to make a template for this one because this is a light activated sensor that I'm working with. So I need to know exactly where to put a hole punch in my black cardstock panel so that when I open the door of the barn, the light hits the sensor and causes it to activate. So all I'm gonna do is remove the little plastic piece from the sensor, grab me a scrap piece of paper, and I'm lining it up. I'm gonna put a line straight across the bottom here, and it's, it's not perfect, but it ends up working out just fine, and then a little dot right where the sensor would be. I'm going to cut the cut this off straight across and then I'm going to grab that black die cut cardstock there and we're going to line that up to the left and then use our hole punch to go ahead and punch a hole into this. Now you're going to need a hole punch that has a little bit of a larger hole on it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now that we have this cut and we lay it down, it lines up perfectly. Now we can go ahead and start placing our mounting foam down so that we can add this piece. Now it does take three layers of mounting foam because the device is a, it's not too thick uh, it, to me it's not, but in order for everything to lay flat, I ended up going with three layers of the mounting foam. I would recommend if you're using uh, black card stock that you use black mounting foam. I just don't have any right now. The reason that I'm using the darker card stock is that I was, my thought process was if I'm going with a darker card stock, then when I close the door on the barn, the darkness from all the colors will help to um, keep it shut off instead of using a lighter card stock. I don't know if it made a difference or not, but that was my thinking. You saw right there, I had ran that piece through my die cut machine. First of all, I was just going to try to do a couple of little hole punches there where the speaker's at so that when the sound plays, it's not muffled. Hole punch wouldn't reach that far over. So I actually took the little fruit slice from the raise a glass die set and ran that through my die machine to give me some open area there over the speaker. Any die you have will do the job. It just so happens that I grabbed that one and it worked perfectly. So now that we have everything in place, we can go ahead and start to put everything together. I'm going to go ahead and use my liquid adhesive to add my pattern paper to the top of the black cardstock. 
I've already lined that up and added it to the, um, secured it in place with that mounting foam we laid down. Now that we have the last layer of the barn on, we can start adding our decorative pieces. And I'm going to come in with the decorative pieces for the door and I'm going to add those. When I first started doing this, I found that I needed something to help keep that door shut. So I used one of the little Velcro tabs that you've probably seen me use several times in videos to hold things shut. I just placed one of those on the back side of the door and then that helps to keep it closed. I did notice though that light was still getting in there and that it would go off, the device would go off. So what I ended up doing was I took a piece of black cardstock and I punched a hole with my hole punch. And then the circle from that, I actually laid it on the card over the little device, put some glue on it, shut the door on it, and then lifted the door back up so that it would have precise placement. It worked like a charm. Once I added that little piece of cardstock to fit in that hole there to cover the, the light sensor, it stopped playing while the door was shut. I had no more issues with that. I put the barn aside to let it dry because I have some glue on the door and then the decorative pieces have glue and I thought this would be a great time to go ahead and stamp the faces on the ghost and the pumpkins. I'm using the coordinating stamp set for the dies and it's called the Names Jack and we just stamped some cute little faces on these guys and now I'm going to play around with the placement. The only thing I want to tell you about the placement is when you're placing the pieces down, try not to put anything underneath the door that's going to open and activate the sound. I found the less you have under the door, the better it works. So just keep that in mind. Here I'm just adding some sequin tape because I really want to make sure that this stays on my card base. Speaking of card bases, a five and a half by five and a half inch, 110 pound Nina Avalanche white card base. I used a piece of the pattern paper from the back to basics paper pad, and then I cut that down to fit on the front of my card base. I just use liquid adhesive to add the pattern paper to the card base, and then of course, we removed that release paper from the uh, tape and added it to our card base. So here's our fun Halloween card. <laughs> Adding that black little dot to the inside to cover up the hole when the doors closed made all the difference in the world. Just keep that in mind if you happen to do something like that. I did come in and add a couple of more details to my card with the two bells of hay and it says hay boo on it. I thought that was a silly little twist there. And then of course the lights at the top because well we're having a haunted barn party and isn't that fun? <laughs> I used the Merry and Bright stamp set for the lights and I just stamped them and then cut out the lights that I wanted to use and colored them with Halloween colors in orange, green, and purple. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. I really do appreciate you joining me today. I hope you'll click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of new content to the channel. Now for more information on the products used, head over to the Honeybee Stamps website. And until next time, take care.